You might be wondering why I decided to compare this grinder, the Fellow Ode, to this grinder, the EK43. And the reason is, many of us as home baristas had our first aha moments around coffee in cafes. And whether you realize it or not at the time, from this grinder. And we're constantly trying to get as close as we can to an experience at home like this with a piece of kit like this. So how close does the fellow ode with the version two burrs get to the Malconig EK43? First, let's look at these grinder similarities. They both grind coffee with vertically mounted flat burrs, and there's definitely a sense that the Ode is a miniature and more stylized version of the EK. At the end of the day, they both do the same thing, taking whole bean coffee and grinding them for a range of brew methods. But that's about where the similarities end. Now, I want to briefly run down the differences in specs. And while some of these differences might be starkly obvious, I'm really more interested in how the bigger burrs and heftier overall construction of the EK stack up in terms of quality with a blind taste test against the Ode later on. So first of all is size. The Ode is about 10 pounds and 10 inches tall, while the EK, and this is the short version of the EK actually, is over 50 pounds and 27 inches tall. There's also a significant difference between the size of each grinder's burr sets, with the Odes at 64 millimeters and the Malconigs at 98. More on that in a second. Second is grinding capability. The Ode is specced specifically for filter coffee, limited mostly by its motor, which can't handle the consistent workload of grinding coffee fine enough for espresso. And while you can outfit this grinder with plenty of high-end burrs, you'll only be able to grind for about as fine as a single cup V60 and as coarse as cold brew. The EK, however, is able to grind for espresso without issue and is well known for producing high-clarity espresso shots as well as high-clarity filter coffee. Its motor has no problem chewing through about a pound of coffee in around 20 seconds seconds all day long with an overload circuit for safety in case you somehow manage to overwork it. And you probably didn't need me to tell you any of this. You could probably figure it all out just by looking at these two grinders. The Ode looks like a nicely designed small kitchen appliance, while the EK looks more like it belongs in a lab or a warehouse, more so than a countertop. But utility aside, the difference in burr size and geometry alone, at least on paper, goes a long way for grind consistency and uniformity, which ultimately should translate to better quality, right? But let's go ahead and taste these side by side. And again, the point isn't to see which is better or worse. They're of course designed for very different environments. The point is to see how close we can get to cafe quality at about a 10th of the price. So I'm gonna brew the same coffee into two identical cups with each grinder, mark them on the bottom and have Anna mix them up so I won't know which is which. All right, so I think I mentioned it before, but I made these both on a single cup V60 using my recipe, which is essentially just an adapted version of Hoffman's recipe. And also this isn't my first tasting of these two grinders. I've been making coffee with both of them since I got the new Ode Burrs and have had them both dialed in for what I think is the best cup I can get out of each. So let's see if I can tell what's going on. This was a light roasted Ethiopian, by the way. You know, plenty of sweetness, good body, a little bit of astringency coming in like right at the end. Okay, this one a lot more floral, a little bit more acidity, but not like in an acrid way. It's just like, it's very mellow, it's very clean. <clears throat> I'm gonna give these like another minute and then come back and taste them again once they're a little cooler. All right, so it's been a couple of minutes. I don't wanna taste both of these again. Okay, so some of the like acrid notes, some of the like bitter, this is starting to fade, it's coming more into like, like a dark chocolate, like a more of, of a pleasant bitterness. Still not quite as much acidity. I'd say the acidity is pretty muted um, and there's pretty good sweetness. And then on this cup, so the body's not quite there in terms, you're just side by side anyways. Body's not quite as heavy, but there is a lot more sweetness. 
the sweetness and the acidity are really like harmonious in this one. I really like this cup. I do like the sweetness and kind of the body on this one. I just wish that that acidity and that, um, sorry, the bitterness wasn't quite as present. Overall, I think this is like a more transparent and complex cup. And this has a just a bit more body. Um, let me taste one more time. Yeah, it's almost like more punchy actually. So let's see, if I had to guess, I would say that this is the fellow and this guy is the Malconic. So, yep, Malconic. And of course this is the fellow. <laughs> so no need to check both of them. Mm. But yeah, honestly, both really nice cups. If you taste them side by side, yes, you can certainly taste the difference. I think most people probably could. But is the difference $300 or 300 and some change versus $3,000 and some change? Uh, I don't think so. All right, so I kind of got distracted here and went on a big tangent about different cup profiles between the two grinders, which I think kind of missed the point. Now, at the end of the day, the Ode makes great coffee and you're really only missing out on a little bit more complexity and nuance with the EK43. And the home grinder market has a lot going on for it this year with the time of more sculptures coming out soon, the new DF64V, and of course, Opus and Encore ESP for conical grinders. And really the only reason that I would want to spend more than $1,000 on a grinder would be to get into something like the offerings from Weber or Legome that you know, have this sort of boutique, almost handmade custom feel about them. They feel more exclusive because they're made slowly in small runs, and it feels like you're part of a community of like-minded people for owning one. Now the Malconic makes great coffee, but it's so massive and unwieldy, um, and no variable RPM by the way, and it's mass produced, so there's none of that extra intangible stuff about it. At least not for me. And by the way, if you were wondering, this EK is going into a cafe in town that I've been helping get up and running. We got this grinder way earlier than we expected, so I've been developing some recipes and getting a feel for the workflow as best that I can here. And hopefully I can show you what's going on with that in about a month. Okay, and you know what? Let's just close it out right here. I hope that you found this video helpful or at least entertaining. And if you have one of the original odes, did you end up upgrading the burrs? Or are you happy with the original set? Or did you even spring for the SSPs? Let me know down in the comments, and if you're curious about how I brewed these coffees, then I've got that video for you right here.